welcome back to my channel sports fans okay let's get into this one right here deshaun watson is officially a bust he's a bust he's a bust i think he tore his achilles or something like this today in the game and basically has did nothing since he got that guaranteed i think it was five year 230 yeah 230 million dollar contract <laughs> look you can't blame cleveland for giving him a contract but you can't blame them for giving him the biggest guarantee guaranteed contract of all time it's just ridiculous especially them knowing he was going through that legal case them knowing he was going to have to sit out his first year and i don't care who you are if you have to sit out an entire year most likely you're not going to be the same quarterback that you were coming into the season now you might, you know, get better as the season goes, but you're not going to be the same quarterback. It's just not. Look, look at um, Aaron Rodgers. He's not the same quarterback after sitting out last year. He's starting to get a little bit better, but what would what would possess them to give him give him this type of uh, contract? Knowing that he was going through all those allegations, he was going to sit out a full season. It makes no sense. In I'm not I'm I'm not for sure. I think the year he came back also, he had to sit out. So this this was an article produced on the eighteenth. And this is this is the twentieth, right? Cleveland Browns were expecting to get an elite quarterback when twenty two, twenty three, and twenty four first round draft picks and a twenty two fourth round draft pick a 23 third round draft pick and a 20 24 fourth round draft pick were sent to Houston Texans for Deshaun Boston in a 2024 six round draft pick <laughs> in March 2022 Boston received an um, uh, president fully guaranteed contract five year contract worth 230 million um despite having four years worth 136 million remaining on a four year contract extension extension averaging 39 million per year he signed with the texans in 2020 being rusty in 22 uh 2022 was um anticipated with watson missing the first 11 games of the regular season as he served a suspension for violating the nfl's personal con conduct policy because of sexual assault blah 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 um so we go down here. The offense has been a disaster this season as Watson and the Browns have gotten off to a one and five start. Cleveland is near the bottom of the league um, in every major offensive category, including last in total offense, 29th in passing yards and 27th in points. Watson has completed 61.3 percent of his passes for a thousand and twenty yards with five touchdowns and three interceptions his seven seventy six point six passing rating is 28th in the nfl and watson has been sacked a league high 31 times that's insane it, that's insane for a guy who who is known for a running a running quarterback um advanced metrics paint a bleaker picture of watson's performance according to the true media watson um expected points added epa um per pass play ranks a uh, 590th out of 592 quarterbacks which started the first six games of the season since 2000 <laughs> since 2000 this guy is a hundred i mean 590 out of 590 quarterbacks Woof. Um, Watson is averaging 3.9 yards per drop back this season um, to rank 814 out of 815 quarterbacks since the year 2000. Wow. And it just goes on. <laughs> it just goes on. If I'm not mistaken. Wasn't he hurt last year because of a shoulder injury? Look, I, I don't know if this is karma. That's what some people are going to say for the sexual allegations, which let's be truthful. That has nothing to really do with football. You know, these sports players, um, people in Hollywood, musicians of that kind of ilk are getting accused of all these things. 
especially black men with money. <laughs> it happened to Kobe, happened to Mike Tyson, happened to Bill Cosby, happened to Tupac, happened to delicious goes on and on. That these black men with money that can walk around and have women just throwing themselves at them have to take something from a woman. Wow. <laughs> now, I'm not going to try to say they're innocent, but it just sounds suspect. It just sounds suspect for these things to keep happening over and over and over again. Not to poor men, but to rich stars with money. It, it just doesn't make any sense. But let's get back to this. <laughs> From what I know, when he hurt himself, he was getting booed. When he hurt himself and he was getting booed when they was taking him off the court. I mean, off the field. I don't really know what to think about this. All I got to say is it's not his fault that he got this guaranteed contract and he hasn't performed. You can put this on the Cleveland Browns. You can put that on them because they already knew that it was a chance he wasn't going to be the same guy. And he pretty much protested that he was not going to go there to Cleveland unless he got this contract. In Cleveland, they got rid of some pretty good quarterbacks. Well, one, Becker Mayfield, who's a good quarterback now, they got rid of him, and they looked dumb. And Becker Mayfield basically didn't have any too much help when he was over there. Well, I'm not going to say that. He did have some help, but they really wasn't performing up to expectations as a team. So you couldn't put the whole thing on, on, on Baker Mayfield. Although he wasn't performing too good himself at that time. <laughs> so let's talk about Mahomes. And again, I, I've heard people say that it's something in his contract that could terminate the contract now and not give him the rest of the money. We don't know this. I, I mean, I don't I don't know. They say guaranteed con. I don't know what that means then. If you sign a guaranteed contract, I, I really don't know what that means besides the money is guaranteed. He wouldn't be the first quarterback to get guaranteed money and be hurt or didn't live up to the expectations. You know, I mean, look at this. You got these NBA players that don't even show up to work, don't perform up to expectations, load manage, all this stuff. And they got these guaranteed contracts. So you can't beat up on these NFL players for getting these guaranteed contracts. Finally, for the work they put in, and they play more hurt than any other league today. I wouldn't say always because we already knew or already know when we look at it, players in the past, whether it was NBA, NFL, baseball, a lot of these guys played hurt. They went out and performed. They wasn't always getting these guaranteed contracts. They wasn't always getting large contracts like that where they would be well off for the rest of their lives. And yeah, you probably think, huh? Yeah, you getting $10 million a year. Well, $10 million a year ain't what you think. Right? When they tax it, you got to pay the agent. You got to pay the lawyer. You got to pay the uh, manager. And then you still got to continue to try to live that kind of lifestyle the rest of your life. You could get sued <laughs> for something stupid. So these players in the past, even though they were, if they made 10, 20 million a year, they wasn't well off like that. And even, even when you got that contract um, and you retired, you still had to pay, you know, um, taxes where you live at. You still had to pay, you know, some type of managers to keep your name out there or get some kind of deals or pay a lawyer. That's just how it was. So let's talk about Mahomes today. He didn't really have a good throwing game. But it was one play where he juke two defenders out of their socks. And he really didn't juke them too hard. It wasn't like some, um, what's this guy's name that played for the Ravens? Ooh, I forget his name. It, it, it wasn't like that quarterback. It wasn't like no Mike Vick type of stuff. It, it was just, you know, Mahomes, he runs like slow motion. But he kept acting like he was going to throw the ball and it kind of threw the defender off. And you would think as an NFL player that you would know where the line was, especially the second defender that he could not throw the ball. And he still kind of act like he was going to throw the ball and, and kind of like sidestep the dude and, and juke him. So, look, 
I said this before. Mahomes, he will never be better than Brady. Well, let me say this first before you guys start getting into, you know, this and that. What I'm saying is Mahomes is a great quarterback. And I think he's going to win maybe like, you know, five championships in the league is is very easy compared to pass errors. I don't think the quarterback competition is there. I don't think the defense is there. So I think Mahomes being a, 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 an elite quarterback, maybe to me the second greatest quarterback of all time behind Brady, unless he can prove me wrong, um, the three-peat won't be, mean nothing to me. It'll, it'll mean, I'm talking about as far as passing Brady. You got to remember, Brady went to 10 Super Bowls, right? Seven and three. <laughs> um, unless he goes to at least, whew, he would have to go to seven Super Bowls. And we already know he's not undefeated in the Super Bowl. Um, and Tom Brady owned him two times. One in the championship game and one in the Super Bowl, a blowout. Now, we all know Brady wasn't, you know, prime time Brady, but Brady didn't make mistakes in that Super Bowl, right? And to be a great quarterback, you got to show that you're great against elite defenses. And guess what? That Bucks defense was an elite defense at least that year, right? When they played um, Packers, when they played the Saints, and then when they played Kansas City. So when I look at the overall picture, I don't, I don't care how the media hypes it up to sell it like, you know, they, they want to sell what you see today. That's fine. It's always great that they sell the fans what's in front of them, what they're seeing now. You know, they've been doing that with LeBron James a long time. But they're selling you a lie <laughs> with LeBron James. Mahomes, they're not selling you a lie. But to me, when we look back at it in the 2000s, in the 210s, and look at the quarterback competition that Brady was facing, it was just much, it was more stiffer. It was more stiffer competition at the quarterback position. When we look at the 2000s, in the 2010s, the defense, I don't think it's no comparison. There's no comparison. When we look at some of those defenses that Brady had to face, we look at those coast defenses, when we look at the Pittsburgh, when we look at Bucks had a good defense in the early 2000s, um, who else? Ravens, Jets. Um, I can't remember all the names, but the, I'll remember it in a minute. But the defense w- was just different back then. If I didn't say the Steelers, they just had better defenses. All-time great defenses that Brady had to go against, and he would be known for shredding a lot of these de- these great defenses, <laughs> like Baltimore, like the Colts, like Pittsburgh, all these great defenses that Brady faced on the way to uh, Eagles defenses. They were good back in the 2000s, 2010s. Um, who is that? The, the uh, Seattle had great defenses. So, whether Tom Brady won or lost in the Super Bowl, he played elite great defenses. To me, I, I don't think you have elite great defenses like you had in the 2000s or the 2010s. You don't. And you can't tell me that the quarterback um, competition today or what the, the past five years since Mahomes has become great is any comparison to the 210s or 2000s. Just go back and look at it. Go back and you don't have no Peyton Manning in the face. You don't have no prime um, Aaron Rodgers or no uh, or Drew Brees or these type of guys. That, that competition just ain't there. Donovan McNabb, I know people say, oh, he ain't no elite quarterback. He, he was good. He was good for those years. And if he wasn't playing elite quarterbacks, he was playing elite defenses. That's just the way it is. Now, to me, if you put Mahomes in the 2010s, it wouldn't change who Mahomes was, right? It's like if you put Michael Jordan in any era, it's not going to change who Michael Jordan was, right? He's Michael Jordan S, right? But for Tom Brady to hold all the quarterback records in the regular season, the playoffs, the 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 Super Bowl, and hold a lot of just NFL player records in the regular season the playoffs 
and in the Super Bowl, as far as just an NFL player, I don't think Mahomes will ever get to that. He, that's that's the level, you know, we're talking about. And all the comebacks <laughs> that Brady has, I don't know. I don't. Uh, he might get to it. Mahomes might get to those those, those comebacks in the Super Bowl or the um, playoffs or the regular season. He's got a long way to go. Not to mention, um, Tom Brady didn't play with that many. Um, Hall of Fame or Pro Bowl players as Mahomes has played with. Now, Mahomes is proving himself, I think, the last two years. Them getting rid of uh, great players that he can still win without, you know, Hall of Fame or Pro Bowl players. So, you know, that's a notch in, notch in his belt right there, showing his greatness. Tom Brady showed that, like, all of his career. I guess he had a great defense. But you got to remember, the second half of his career, it wasn't these great defenses. The first three Super Bowls, yeah. Yeah, they were good defenses, but they weren't the defenses that um, he had in his first his first three Super Bowls. That he had in his next four Super Bowl wins. Or, let me see. That would be... Or, or the three Super Bowl losses. So they're five. I think what are they six and zero this year? Six and zero, and they keep winning. They keep finding ways to win. And this is this is the type of resume that Mahomes really needs to pass Brady or draw even to him. And if he, if he wins that that three peat, uh, I, for me, I just can't put him even with Brady. I just can't. <laughs> see when we talk about it, it's the same thing when we talk about LeBron James. And we go back to this again. The level of competition that LeBron had to face in the 210s just wasn't there. Not even not even in the 2000s, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt because you still had a lot of 90 players in the 2000s, even though they, they, they switched the defensive rules in 2005. Like I said, there was still a lot of uh, 90s players there, and it was still a lot of players in the 2000s still wanting to give that effort of playing defense. Right, just because they take a they they enforce a rule, it doesn't automatically. The players need time to adjust. It's just not going to go away that they're you know playing. They're not going to play that same defense. When they say you couldn't hand check, what was it ninety five or something like that? Guess what? They were still hand checking. <laughs> they said all you could do was, you know, your your hand check now. Okay, you could arm bar the guy in the post or the perimeter, but you couldn't hand check. But they were still doing it, and it was just a consensus with the guys. That's the way they wanted to play. So if they still got hand checked, they wasn't crying. <laughs> they wasn't crying. It was just like, okay, we'll do it to you too. If the refs want to call it, let them call it. And then we'll, we'll cool down on it. We'll, we'll stop doing it. But, you know, you got to remember, I keep trying to tell you, when Jordan was at the top of the key after he stole the ball in the 98 NBA Finals game six and he came down, the first thing, well, before he started to drive, the first thing Russell did Byron Russell was hand check him and Michael Jordan like pushed his hand away and then took off. And then Byron Russell, um, Michael Jordan pushed off on him at the foul line because he already knew what uh, Byron Russell was going to do. Did I say Bill Russell? He already knew what Byron Russell was going to do. He was going to try to hand check him again and they weren't going to call that. Hell, Dennis Rodman was doing a lot of hand checking and all that stuff. All these guys were. It wasn't until the two tens to where it started getting completely soft. So Mahomes, I, I don't blame him for playing to me. And people say, oh, Brady played in a, you know, at the end of his career, he played in a week, this and that. No. Nah. <laughs> yes, it was weaker than the 2000s, but it's, it's definitely not weak as the 2020s. The, the 2020s is, is a joke, man. You already know this thing where you, you kick off now and they can't even move until the guy gets the ball and, you know, it, 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 if you're going for a hit on the guy and he puts his helmet down, you know, the offensive player puts his helmet down and he gets hit on a helmet by the defender, they're calling it on the defender. What, what, what is he supposed to do? We just we're pulled up. We like got superpowers. So it's it, it's just this type of stuff to where, you know, you can't even like hit the quarterback basically at all. It's ridiculous.
And that that goes to how Mahomes is going to even dominate even more. And what's his? I keep forgetting his name. Um, Lamar Jackson. That's how he's able to run around like it's nothing and get all these yards. I want you guys to go and pull up a video. Michael Vick highlights compared to Lamar Jackson's highlights. <laughs> Michael Vick played in a man's league. After he ran around and scrambled and got his yards, he was liable to get knocked the hell out. And he did sometimes. And they had to get up like a man. Michael Vick's highlights, I think they're just more impressive for me looking at him and for me knowing, you know, what kind, what type of defense he was going up against. Remember, he was the first player to go into Lambeau and win a playoff game. The Falcons did. And they put it on Michael Vick's back. We haven't seen Lamar do nothing that incredible yet. Right? Um, he, he's one of the worst passers of all time in the playoffs so far. <laughs> as far as touchdowns and interceptions, passing ratings, passing yards, he's one of the worst quarterbacks of all time. He's like in the bottom five all time. And he's getting these MVPs. And, you know, they, they don't want to tell the truth about the, the NFL now. We already know how soft it is. What was it, Brady's last season? I, I think he threw for more yards than he's ever had in his career or something like that. I think it might be the second. I don't know if it was. I think that Randy Moss season, he might have threw for more. I'm not sure. But it was it, it was pretty much up there. So we'll see. I'm not going on who I like. I can tell you what, I hated Tom Brady. I was a Colts fan. But ultimately, <laughs> when I seen what he was doing to the Colts, I saw what he was doing to San Diego back in the day when they had great teams. Pittsburgh, um, the Ravens, all, all these great teams. They, uh, the, uh, who, uh, the Eagles. He was showing up and showing out with very little great receiver help. Yes, he had Gronk. And we won't say he didn't have any receiver help because he had Edelman and um, what's the guy's name? Water Beard. Oh, I forget his name. But, yeah, he, he was a great receiver. I ain't going to say he didn't have any great receivers, but, you know, he didn't really, besides Randy Moss, he didn't have any guys that could, you know, take the top off. And Randy, what, Randy Moss played there for, what, two years or something, something like that? But he, he, he didn't have, like, no super teams, nothing like that. He didn't have no all-time great teams like that. And for, you know, Peyton Manning to have all the great weapons he had back in the day and didn't do too much. I think even Drew Brees had better receiver help than Tom Brady. Now, you can chop it up to, the, yeah, you, you had Bill Belichick, but he was more of an offensive, I mean, defensive mind. You know, and he, he kept that team in line. Brady didn't take a lot of, you know, big contracts. And I heard Brady today on the Kansas City game when they was playing the Niners. And, look, a lot of people was, you know, criticizing him for his first few games. Oh, man, he... You know, he, he don't know how to talk. He's not going to be able to do this, you know, uh, color analyst thing. And, you know, I can guarantee you, if you take any, even Tony Romo, their first couple games, they're going to be stuttering. They're going to not be calling stuff right. They're, they're just going to be hesitant. They're going to mess up. It's something new. That's all it is. And guess what? This game, he was killing it. Last game, he, he looked like he was, you know, going to be a great color analyst. He was on track, and then this game, it, 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 it was pretty good. It was pretty good. He didn't mess up on nothing. You know, he, he, didn't, he didn't skip a beat. He didn't skip a beat. Um, but, you know, like Greg Olson or um, Tony Romo or John Madden, the great call analyst, he's got to be able to have something that we remember him by, you know, <laughs> That, that he says that we're like, oh, yeah, that's that's Tom Brady. He, he says this and, you know, th these are his key words or key phrases or, you know, he, he's got to be able to have that. He doesn't have that yet. And we'll, we'll see because I, I never when I heard Tom Brady, you know. Talk or saw him in interviews or saw him on commercials, there's nothing about him to where or to where we said this guy was funny or, you know, that he could be on TV and he could be a color analyst. Calling games. But we'll see. I mean, he was pretty good today. He was he was he was great. He was great. I mean, if anybody knows the game, it's Tom Brady. 
And you don't have to be like the greatest player of all time. We, we know that to be a caller analyst. Just, you know, you just got to be on it. You got to have some, you got to have a sense of humor too. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, there, there's a lot of guys that really didn't make it. Look at um, Emmett Smith. He couldn't even finish a damn sentence. He was on ESPN for like, what, two, two years? He, he couldn't even say words. <laughs> he couldn't even pronounce words or finish a sentence. You know, Charles Barkley is like that. He can't even finish a damn sentence, but at least he's funny. I don't think he, he's the most intelligent guy or the brightest guy on TV. You're not even close to it. But he, he's got a job because he, he's funny. He knows basketball. Um, he's a great elite player, one of the greatest players of all time at his position. So he's there. Um, but yeah, a lot of those guys don't make it. They thought um, Tony Gonzalez, they thought he was going to be big. I don't even think he's there for CBS anymore. Um, who was that? The, um, uh, the tight, uh, Ray Lewis. They tried to bring him onto ESPN. They thought he was going to be big. Um, they, they, they thought that, you know, because he's got that, like, <laughs> I don't know what to call it, <laughs> preacher mentality. He's always hyped up. They thought he was going to be good. Nope. Nope. He's not good at reading a script. He's not good at it, man. Um, What about... What's this guy's name? Just jogged my mind. Oh, uh, Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice. He was never good at it. I've seen him on TV a couple times, ESPN and stuff like that. They had to, they had to cut him out. Couldn't finish the sentence. Couldn't read scripts. Teleprompter. He just he just wasn't good. Everybody's not good at this. And a lot of people aren't good at first. It's not an easy job. But you eventually see who is and who isn't. It's just the way it is. Um, you, you got a lot of uh, a, a lot of players who really weren't good players. They end up being a bust, and they're on TV. They're good at it. Um. So yeah, Deshaun Watson. I, I just <laughs> you, you can't hate on the man for getting his money because you don't know what's going to happen. The NFL is the biggest money-making uh, league out of all, what, what is it, five major sports leagues? Is it the NFL, the NBA, hockey, did I say baseball? And I, I guess they want to throw in soccer, maybe. In the NFL, only on 16 games, I guess 17 games now, they make the most revenue out of any sport. So I guess you can include playoffs and finals, right? I mean, playoffs and Super Bowl. But still, baseball plays like 160-something games. NBA, like 84? Not too sure about NHL. I think it's close to what the NBA plays. But goodness, they make all this money. And these players, I, I think they get paid the, the lowest out of baseball and, and, and basketball. Yet the NFL makes the most money? So, yeah, you, you can't hate on these guys for getting these guaranteed contracts because because the NFL, I mean, the yeah, the NFL is, is making so much money. It's crazy. It's nuts. Now, do I think they're overpaid? Yes, I, I think all these sports players are overpaid. I do. I do. In comparison to how much we make, the regular people make at their jobs. Sports players are overpaid. And don't think they're not, in my opinion, because some of us work for some companies that make billions a year, millions a year. And we don't get nothing close to that. Look, at, look, if you work for Walmart. Wow. They're paying you minimum wage and they're the biggest money making company in the world. From what I know. That's what I heard. It's hard for me to believe that because I think the the oil companies make even more. They're making like, you know. 12 billion dollars quarterly you know but Forbes won't never put them out there like that <laughs> we already know the oil companies are getting paid maybe some insurance companies right because from what i know it's only like three four major insurance companies the other ones are just like branches of the the, the four major so we, we we probably could say i mean uh insurance companies 
stuff like that, man. Um. So yeah, they, they, we don't get paid nothing compares in comparison to what our our, our employers make. And they're playing a, a, a kid sport. They're playing a kid sport. And at least you can say NFL players, at least. Well, they used to. I don't know. I don't know about today. But they used to always play hurt. NBA players used to always play hurt. Not today for NBA. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. So you you guys tell me what you think, man. The, the, this thing blew up in the Browns' face. They had no reason giving this guy this amount of money on a guaranteed contract. They could have just given him the contract, right? Five year, two hundred thirty million. They could just give him that contract without it being guaranteed. And then I think he got like a record signing bonus. I don't don't know how much it was. But he was making forty something million a year. <laughs> if you're a Cleveland Brown fan, you are sick. And all you can hope for now is that another quarterback comes in and he plays good, and he, you know, they can take off. I mean, we've seen this before. We saw, you know, second string, third string quarterbacks come in and they 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 play real good. But you know, a, a lot of people. When a contract was signed with Deshaun Watson, they were appalled that he was getting this kind of guaranteed contract with without even proving himself to the team and all the allegations. You could even push the allegations to the side. That'd be one thing. But that that just fueled it. Like, you know he's gonna get suspended for eleven games coming into the season. And you still give him the contract. You you pretty much gave him all this money. <laughs> For not even playing the first year. That's ridiculous. You're sitting at home and you get, don't have to go work for 11 months and they give you all the money that you usually would make. And probably even more because you haven't really proved. Yeah, yeah he proved himself in Houston. That don't, come on, man. And you should have known what kind of guy he was. He was trying to push himself out of Houston after having great seasons. It wasn't nothing that great in Cleveland. Right, that he had to do that. The way he acted. So, tell me what you think. <laughs>